Hi, my name is Alex Gray. I'm a mystic artist and it's a great thrill to finally get to visit Watkins Books and uh, be surrounded by a treasury of wisdom and uh, it, uh, it's hard to stop from just grabbing everything off the shelves. Uh, I think like uh, most children I always realized I wanted to uh, be an artist. Most kids come out drawing and painting and uh, this is uh, natural and uh, then they get trained not to be artists. So uh, in my case I'd say it came uh, from a long line of uh, incarnations that uh, I believe I'm the reincarnation of a uh, symbolist painter Jean Delville. He was a Belgian symbolist and a Rosicrucian and uh, occult uh, uh, artist. And uh, he died 1953, about 40 days before I was uh, uh, conceived. And so if you go by the Tibetan bardo, uh, I was within the time frame. And uh, he wrote a book called The New Mission of Art. Uh, back around 1900 and uh, so it needed updating so uh, I wrote a book called The Mission of Art and it was uh, published a few years ago and uh, so I feel like there's been a continual thread of uh, a drive uh, toward making uh, the heaven worlds visible here on earth and that's been the drive of all sacred art and the sacred traditions. And uh, so I think that the visionary artists today uh, have access to a, uh, a realm, a repeatable uh, method of reaching the visionary mystical state uh, through the entheogens. And this gives uh, the artists of today a unique uh, perspective uh, and a unique subject. Uh, to actually uh, depict the heaven worlds that can have been seen uh, throughout the ages by the mystics, but it's been very difficult to describe. You see uh, uh, portions of it in different sacred traditions, uh, but uh, today now we have uh, scientifically verified means of accessing this uh, dimension. So we like to paint the transcendental realms from observation. And I think this is why visionary art matters, especially today. It's because uh, really this is the source of all uh, wisdom uh, traditions, is the visionary mystical experience. And so uh, the best uh, kind of transcription of this uh, transmission, really, of this state right now is a... Uh, um, uh, a depiction by an eyewitness and uh, so that's what a lot of the wisdom texts are and that's what uh, the new visionary art is and I feel myself uh, just to be part of this wave of uh, artistic uh, interest that's spread throughout the world really and uh, so you know my earliest works that I have are uh, works that I did when I was five years old and uh, uh, my subject matter has always been wrapped up with death. Uh, so uh, I think that that's probably one of the, uh, the elements that uh, a spiritual artist uh, has to confront and deal with and perhaps uh, anyone on their spiritual path is not going to really put any kick into it until they realize their time is limited. And uh, I think that's why Buddha said that uh, met any, even a brief meditation on, the, on mortality is worth many years of meditation on other subjects. So uh, I think that it's uh, what we have to uh, work with. Um, I think that uh, what is uh, coming now is a planetary civilization and every civilization uh, Eastern Western uh, cradle of uh, civilization was founded on the entheogens 
we have the Kaikion at the uh, cradle of the uh, Western civilization. This was the drink, the psychedelic that Plato, Socrates, all the uh, Greek philosophers uh, spoke of the ideal and archetypal realm. How did they gain access to that? Through the state religion, uh, the mystery religion of the Eleusinian uh, revelation. And uh, at the height of this ceremony, which lasted for several days, they imbibed the Kaikion, and this allowed them access to the realm of the divine. Now, go to uh, the uh, cradle of Eastern civilization, and you have the Rig Veda, which uh, speaks of Soma, the elixir that allows uh, people to access the realm of the gods. So we have Eastern and Western civilization founded on uh, the visionary mystical experience accessed through entheogens psychedelics, whatever word you want to name them. They're the plant teachers and what we just say as the real sacraments that humanity has. And uh, this gift, uh, recognized throughout the uh, South America as well, and uh, uh, at the foundation of the Mayan and Aztec and uh, uh, other mystical culture. So we see a worldwide phenomena of access to the uh, uh, realm of the uh, divine mystery. And it's only in the last, you know, uh, what, 50 years or so that industrial society, the materialistic society, has uh, stamped out and attempted to stamp out this uh, means of access to the divine. Uh, it's criminal. That is criminal. It's insane. It's psychotic. For, uh, to try and cut ourselves off from God. You have a dependable means of accessing real God through real sacrament. Now, I think it's important to establish that at this time, and most of us understand, we live in an anti-sacramental society. And it's important for us to uh, recognize this as a religious and civil right, that uh, people should have access to the medicine, to the sacrament, in order to have a real relationship with real spirit. I'm not saying at all that that's the only means. By any uh, account, there's the yoga, there's meditation, the royal road, there's many means of accessing the realm of the divine. But for hard-headed Westerners who are so entrenched in their rational mind, uh, I needed uh, you know, spiritual dynamite to blow open my doors of perception. And so do many others. And uh, in a safe set and setting, this is 65% uh, uh, of the time. Uh, it's been scientifically measured. Now we have uh, a repeated double-blind experiment uh, on whether psychedelics or entheogens can uh, elicit uh, the visionary mystical experience. and. They've been proven by good science and is published in the best journals of psychopharmacology uh, that yes, indeed, for spiritually inclined people at 65% uh, of the time, they will have a full-blown mystical experience within a few hours. Now, show me another religious method that will access the divine with that speed and that kind of scientific verified uh, you know, uh, numbers. I, I challenge any of the religions to stand up to that. Okay, so now we have this repeatable means, and there was the foundation of both Eastern and Western civilization. Why are we not using it today? Well, various forces are preventing it, but uh, my hope is that it will, and, and that it is already, uh, the foundation of a planetary civilization. Uh, since we have uh, recovered uh, this uh, gift of, uh, of nature and of the gods, you know, as this means of, of access, then uh, our art and the, uh, the uh, teachings and the, uh, the sense of justice, I think every person who serves public office 
uh, it should be mandatory that they uh, that they do ayahuasca or some uh, psilocybin or within a, a, a spiritual setting in order for them to really have a heart connection with the service of uh, the the people that they'll be uh, working with and so that they erase their uh, personal agenda and uh, are really coming from a heart of service. Um, and I feel like this is uh, the important direction that artists uh, can take their work at this time and really anyone who wants to serve the awakening of uh, the human uh, spirit and uh, so uh, this is really one of uh, my quests along with the, uh, uh, the depiction of these profound and infinite realms uh, the artwork comes directly out of uh, this visionary state and people who have been there recognize it and it's really why my work has any credibility or uh, uh, you know has drawn the interest of people around the world is because they've been to these realms through whatever means and uh, recognize them and so it in a way the artwork validates uh, an experience that for many they may feel is a, a, a very uh, isolated personal uh, hallucination or a, uh, something that they're worried about. Have they gone crazy? You know, is it, now they're, uh, they have a sense of their own boundlessness. So for, for people who uh, are just beginning to uh, enter into those dimensions, to have a depiction of those uh, dimensions uh, outwardly then uh, is something that says, oh, okay, well, I'm not crazy, or I, or I uh, just like uh, this tendency that humans have towards self-destructive behavior, uh, something that uh, only time will tell. But it's up to the people who have um, seen the beauty of uh, the web of life and this precious gift of cosmic evolution that we're part of. Uh, you know, planet Earth is a rare alembic. It's an alchemical uh, brew that's been uh, going for billions of years. And it, it really is only very special solar systems that could ever come up with uh, a life. Uh, and so to have life evolve to a point where a being is able to receive uh, messages directly from the divine. This is part of the purpose that the universe was birthed. So that God who yearned to know us uh, and to lose itself uh, in matter has evolved to the point where now we're just able to tap in and tune in to this uh, divine infinite cosmic source. So uh, to have artwork that is um, pointing us in the direction of our own self-realization and uh, uh, recognition of the God force in everyone and in everything, uh, to reclaim the sense of unity of uh, humanity as our task at this point. Uh, the uh, fellow uh, Arnold Toynbee, who uh, was a, a scholar of civilizations, world civilizations, he studied 27 of them in his lifetime and uh, wrote scores of books about it. At the end of his life, uh, he thought that, that, that civilizations existed to give birth to better religions. And he said that at the core of every civilization there is a mystical uh, orientation. So what is the mystic core of a planetary civilization? This is, to my mind, the important question. And that's why our uh, efforts have gone toward uh, looking at creative expression in service of love and wisdom. Uh, as a, a spiritual practice. And uh, it's a spiritual practice that runs throughout all the wisdom traditions. 
and uh, the potential of a true sacrament uh, to also be part of this constellation of gifts uh, at the mystic core of a planetary civilization gives me hope.